of thing. So first, I would like to thank the, the organizer to have invited me. It was a very nice week of conferences, and that, yeah, that was very nice. So I will talk about the Sasakian geometry. So I think it's the first talk of the week where we're talking about this. And, um, and uh, so it's a joint work with uh, Charles Boyer, Ong Yang Wang, who's there, <laughs> and uh, Christina Tansen Friedman. And uh, so, so the result I, I will, I will uh, talk about at the very end of the, of the talk holds in, in all generality. But for the purpose of the workshop, and because it was, uh, you know, the topic was toric geometry, I decided to present the really just the toric setting. So I will, uh, so I, I will actually explain the result in the toric setting, even if it's sold in, in all generality. Okay. And uh, so for the background, um, toric setting, toric Sasakian setting, I would say. The way I will present it, it goes back to my thesis in 2010 in Compositio. So that, that, that is a, another reference for the thing I will talk about today. Okay, so, so I will go to the Toric case very soon, but first let me uh, talk a little bit about the Sasakian, Sasakian geometry in general. So I know that most of you are very uh, aware of what Sasakian geometry is, but I, I will, you know, will speak for, for the non-expert just a little, at least five minutes. So in Sasakian geometry, like in uh, Kero geometry, there's, a, there's many structures that we can build a, a metric with it, okay? There's a contact structure, <coughs> contact structure, that is um, analogous to the um, symplectic part in the Kero case. And there's a um, there's a CR structure, which may be associated or you know corresponds to the complex point of view. So in the Kitter case, that's enough to get to get a metric to be at the Kitter metric. But in the Sasakian geometry, you also need another thing, a rev vector field. <laughs> so maybe I can write vector field this once. Okay, R equivalently, R, a contact one form. Okay, so in the Turing case, as you as you all know, I'm sure, in the in the Kitter case, it doesn't matter if you take the symplectic point of view or the complex point of view, meaning that if you fix the symplectic structure and you vary the complex structure, or otherwise, you can really go from one picture to the other. Uh, thanks to the Rajon transform, as you as we heard a lot this week. And uh, so this is the same in, in the Sasakian geometry. In the Tori case, we don't really care about, you know, the point of view is we can go from one point of view to the other. So personally, I, I like to, to start with this. So I fix the contact structure and then vary the CR structure and the vector fields. So, so what's a contact manifold? It's an odd dimensional manifold together with a distribution, so co-oriented contact manifold of compact is manifold. So D is a rank 2N distribution. So you can see as a sub-bundle. And the contact, the, the, the condition to be contact can uh, actually, so I, I, will, I want to get to the symplectic picture. So the condition to be compact is the following. So is that the cone will, um, will have, so y n r. The cone over n is symplectic. So this way it doesn't mean much because, you know, you can put symplectic structure on many things. But actually, so the real definition that people don't usually really like is that the cone, the natural cone to look at is not just the product, but the annihilator of d in t star n. Okay, so this is the, the space of one forms that vanishes on, on d. Okay, and so that thing, so the being contact, d is contact, 
means that this thing is a submanifold, a uh, symplectic submanifold, which respect to the natural structure, symplectic structure on the cotangent space. Actually, here I'm lying a little bit because it's not exactly this. This is the annihilator of D with a zero section. And we take a connected component. Okay, just, just to say that when you have a contact structure, then you have a symplectic structure. I just wanted to, to make that at least that uh, double uh, arrows uh, clear. Okay. Um, okay, so so we have a contact structure. Now uh, maybe I can talk a little bit about the rev vector field. Actually, when we want to make this this uh, represent this uh, no, this the this thing uh, this representation this decomposition very clear. What we have to say, what we have to take, is a contact structure. So the contact one form. is a section in that thing. Well, maybe just, this is a one form such that this kernel is exactly, is exactly D. So this is a section of that thing. So we can make this representation very clear. So this is a contact one form at the red vector field. Well, it, it, it would be much more than that, but the rim <laughs> vector field psi is a, is a vector field first, uh, satisfying this condition. So we can get one from the other, like it's a bijection vector field and contact one form. Okay. Okay. So in the one case we were going to talk about, which has been a, you know, very simple case, the quasi-regular case, is when there is a, a S1 action, which is induced by, a, or generated by, by the vector field, psi. Uh, so with this action, we can consider the quotient, which is the quotient of n by S1 psi. So the, this S1 action. And this is a compact or bifold. So this is not always the case that we have a, a S1 action like this. But you know, on, on every uh, contact uh, current and manifold, we have such things. And so we can consider the quotient. So a CR structure now is, well, is essentially a complex structure on, on the quotient, more or less. <laughs> So I can represent this by an endomorphism of D, as you know, yes, satisfying the usual condition. So this is a complex structure on that on that distribution plus some integrability condition. Uh, yeah, something I forgot to say is that the fact that it's uh, that it, this thing is symplectic with respect to the natural structure tells us that we have this, but moreover, we have this very important thing, is that the differential of eta is non-degenerated on D. So with a contact one form or with a red vector field, a CR structure, so in the quasi-regular case if you want, we have a Kähler structure on the quotient. And psi. Actually, just because the tangent space of x psi can be identified with d, and all the psi invariant structure on on n can be uh, can be put on a structure on n psi. Okay. So this is uh, so this is why usually people say that Sesekin manifold are sandwiched between uh, between Kähler manifold. So yeah, I didn't tell, but uh, yeah, the the other thing is that. The, we have a Kähler structure on y n uh, given uh, well, usually it's given this way. So we have take R two G n plus D R two. So this is the matrix, and omega is D one over R. Yeah. 
So you don't have to remember all this. I, 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 anyway, I won't do any computation in front of you. So, so just to, to be clear. And GN is a metric on, on N. So here, G is theta. And here, I'm lazy. I, I should extend G. OK. Very good. Oh, that's wet. OK, now in the Tori case, and we just add a Tori or Torres on the picture. So in the Tori case, let's say, Tori case, then we have a torus of dimension, of maximal dimension, acting on, on N and preserving D. So you can, you know, it's also a torus acting on the cone over N. OK, so that <coughs> YN. Omega Tn plus 1 is a symplectic manifold. So here omega is the is a well is a symplectic structure on the on the symplectization that comes from that picture. And uh, so it's a symplectic toric manifold. Toric cone. So it's a cone in the sense that there's a uh, R action, okay, and uh, it commutes with the with the action of the torus. So the moment map. So there's no doubt that there's a moment map because the the symplectic form is exact. So as I show here. So we have a moment map in here where T is the Lie algebra of the torus T. Okay, this n plus one action. And so we can choose this moment map to be homogeneous over U2. I mean, we, we can choose in the sense that we can, you know, of course, a moment map we can uh, translate. And so we can take it to homogeneous over U2. So the, so the momentum, so the image of the momentum map is a cone. So <coughs> we will see uh, polytops are coming coming in very soon. So see the image of the momentum map is a cone, as I said, and uh, actually it's a polyhedral cone, which is rational in you know the the obvious sense that we even. Uh, Working with this week, meaning that there exist normals. So D is the number of facets. There exists a inward, so this lies in T. So these are normals. Well, inward. And uh, lying in in the lattice of circle subgroup. Okay, so the lattice of circles to group, this is in the sense that the torus is the quotient. Like this. And uh, we also have a, a Dilson like condition that I will not make clear. Along the edges. Okay, so a cone that satisfies these these conditions is a good cone. So that means that this is a good cone in the sense of Lerman. So toric uh, contact um, manifold have been classified by uh, by the work of uh, well some people. Uh, there was Baniaga Molino, there was a uh, Boyer Galaxy, and a uh, final paper, I mean, putting this all together, has been done, done by Lerman. I don't know when exactly. But, um, so, uh, so we have a cone, and in the case where we are, 
we're interested to, that is a, when there is a Sasakian matrix in this, then um, we, can, we have some other condition on this cone, which is the red type condition uh, that I will define as follows. So we have a cone, imagine that we have a cone this way. And uh, so, so that cone, this is a cone over a square. And actually, this is, this is general that in Sasakian setting, we will have a cone over some compact polytope. Actually, uh, so because there exists Sasakian matrix, so also a red vector field, which is induced by light action, so that the red vector field is induced uh, by, the, by the torus action. Then uh, we know that this cone has, a, has, the, has a some properties, is strictly convex property, uh, which means the following. So, so that means that psi is given by, by the action for some, by a, you know, a vector field which is tangent to the orbit for some B and T, okay? And so actually that means that the image of mu or mu eta is in included in the, um, in, in some upper plane, actually, or a certain upper plane, and is compact because n is compact. So we get a, we will get a body top at some point. Okay, so I, I will make this clear. So for some b, and uh, so it has to be included in this. B or to one. Okay, so this there is an hyperplane. Okay, and the image of the uh, the image of the the momentum map actually, but restricted to the image of the contact form has to has to be in this. Okay. So uh, the way I, I seen I defined the, I, I talked about the momentum map. It was going from the simplectization to T star. So eta can be seen as a as a section uh, from n to y n. Okay. So maybe I should. So uh, what I mean is the image of the composition. The image of the composition, or maybe mu, eta, n. So, like this. So we have an hyperplane, and we have a polytope then, which is the uh, the intersection of that hyperplane with C. Okay. So. So we get. So we have an hyperplane. So we have a polytop, so very good. Polytop like we were talking about all, all the week. So, and actually we don't have just a polytop, we also have a labeling for that polytop. Okay, by a labeling I just mean the, a normal vector to each facet or a distance to a facet or, you know, we have a label polytop. B and something I would just call L B. Okay, and L B is just the normals I fixed. L1 B L D B. Okay, where L I is the equivalence class of L I in in the in the quotient. Okay. So we have a label polytop, which might be not rational in general, but but actually is going to be rational in the case where it's um, quasi regular. So anyway, so for now we have we have a label polytop. So this is just like, of course we have uh, this affine space. We can imagine that its tangent space is identified to the quotient by B of 
the space where it fits. Well, anyway, so maybe some remark to fix to fix the idea. So this so P B L B is rational if and only if well, if and only if uh, the, uh, the lattice intersect that line passing through B non-trivially, which is also if and only if the red vector field is quasi-regular. So there is a S1 action that, uh, that induces that, that red vector field. And um, so in that case, then P B L B is the rational label polytope as stated via the Delzon Lehrman Tolman correspondence to that part, to that symplectic uh, the symplectic quotient of pi like psi. Okay. Uh, okay, so given the contact Given a contact to rig manifold, we have plenty of these labeled polytop we've been talking about all, all, all the week. And, um, and so it's very convenient because uh, like the boundary condition we get from, uh, from symplectic, if, if we have a symplectic potential here, we can put it up to a symplectic potential on the cone. And uh, so it fits very nicely. So this is my, was the first remark. Second one would be that that a symplectic potential related to PLB corresponds to a cone Kater matrix, Kater cone matrix, sorry, and Tariq, of course, on YN. And uh, an extra extremal one, so a constant square curvature one, so satisfying the Abbey equation. Uh, implies that, uh, well, actually, it's 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 uh, totally uh, correspond exactly to constant scalar Sasak in matrix on um, and toric. So by this big S, I mean Sasak matrix on um, N D. Okay, so with respect to that, that fixed contact structure. Um, <coughs> so I have other remarks I wanted to um, yeah, so we have a uh, label polytop that are sometimes rational, but not always rational. And one can wonder when, when we have a label polytop, can we, I mean, a polytop with normals fixed on the facet, is it is it coming from that picture? Does it correspond to some contact manifold with some red vector field fixed? And uh, there's a um, there's a very easy answer to that. So given a label polytop. So uh, with um, with uh, defin defining affine function L1 to LD, okay, then we can wonder if it's a, it's if, if it's transversal to a good cone. Then the answer is that it's going to be so. It is um, transversal. Transverse to a good cone. If and only if, so these normals, so these, these affine functions span a lattice. This is not this is not a trivial condition. Is a lattice in the space of affine function. Uh, so here I have to put it somewhere, so maybe, I don't know, in Rn, uh, for which the cone over P is 
is good. So we have, we have a way, a very easy way, but not that easy because to check that something, you know, really span a lattice is not that easy to check. But, but we have a way to check if a, if a label pi top is, is really, you know, a good cone. So the cone over P being just, you know, Equal to zero for, uh, for i to d. Okay. Um, and, uh, okay, maybe that, so that was, yeah, yeah, only for a remark before going to, to the result. Okay, uh, the other thing is that, uh, so of course we can speak about. Uh, about uh, stability, and uh, Tristan Collins and Kambalski de define uh, define the stability for a Sasaki manifold. And he defined, uh, I would say, Sasaki and K, well, poly semi stability. Uh, as the stability, well, the k stability of uh, the cone y n, but polarized with with the red vector field. So you have to choose a red vector field to to uh, you to, to answer the question: Is it stable or not? And um, and so they prove that uh, when we, when you have a constant uh, constant scalar curvature Sasak and metric. Then you then uh, the cone is uh, semi-stable. Um, so in the toric case, we can imagine that we are considering a, a test configuration, like a, which are t invariant, so t equivariant test configuration, and that uh, like we're on the toric case. The T equivariant test configuration can be, um, you know, corresponds to an affine function. Actually, is, is the stability of of this thing. So, if it's T equivariant, you're going to get a piecewise a convex uh, rational function on the cone, which is invariant by you know, homogeneous, and then can restrict it to the to these polytops to get a piecewise uh, linear convex function, okay? And um, so the stability in the, uh, so because, well, we can, so, so the stability, so the fact that the phytic invariant of the test configuration is negative or positive, depending on what you mentioned, then it corresponds to this uh, function all we've, we've been talking about all, all the week, okay? So we're going to take, with that, we get a function a piecewise linear convex uh, function on the transversal polytop F on PBLB, okay? And the stability of the condition well, the fact that I said the Futaki invariant of the test configuration that I didn't name, but maybe I can just call it M, like, is uh, negative, say, corresponds to the fact that the, that the function LAF defined like, on the boundary with respect to the measure, so this is B, this is B. Well, I think that, well, maybe I can take off that A, uh, D mu, P, B is positive, okay, and equal to zero if and only if f is a fine. Okay. So, so we are, can understand the stability in the toric case like, like, like it was for, uh, for the killer case, that is when, when to see this function, okay. And uh, so of course you can interpret the, the conjecture uh, you know, 
unknown conjecture in this case as the as the fact that it's uh, so it's for, it, of course it's for a, a red vector fixed red vector field fixed so uh, well we can interpret easily with these uh, things uh, that's it so maybe uh, maybe I can mention that the shu prove that when there exists a constant scalar curvature metric, actually a solution of the Abre equation. So maybe it's better to call this this way. So a solution of uh, the Abre equation then we have we have this condition old. We have this condition, and uh, this is actually integration by part with the boundary condition, the right boundary condition, and so that that holds also in this setting as well. Okay, so the shu shu, sorry for my Chinese, shu shu proof is that uh, you know all that as well in this case uh, trivially. Okay, just not trivially, but you mean you just applied it. So you just have to check that the boundary condition are the right one, and that that will be okay. Okay, so what I was wanted to talk about is actually not all this. So the existence of a constant scalar curvature metric are um, are um, are the question about stability is you know respect uh, you have to fix a rev vector field. Okay, so and um, so the first uh, so so the question we were asking ourselves was okay. Uh, uh, how to find? How do we find this uh, this vector field? Okay, so I would write it down correctly. Let's see. Um, maybe I'm down to three parts. Okay, so to find a constant scalar so second matrix, we first have to find. A vector field, also a red vector field. Okay, so an element B in the dual cone of C star. I think I forgot to define it, but I can. So, this, so the, the set of all red, red vector field, let's say, T invariant. Okay, we have to find B such that the theta key invariant of the label polytop is zero. Okay. What I mean by that is, well, there's many ways to see it. So that means that the functional is equal to zero for all function, for all affine function. Are uh, equivalently that the center of mass of P is equal to center of mass uh, PB. P of del P with respect to that measure I didn't define. Okay, so so we are we have to find such, such, such red vector fields. Okay, so I, I forgot to, to define. So this is this is just the dual cone. Okay, this is just the space set of vectors in T such that x b is positive for all x in C. And so the rep condition is that this this uh, cone is not empty. Okay. So to answer this question, actually, we can we can take a very very old tool, and you know, and put the put our problem in this. So recall. So this is the, the question. Now I'm, uh, we'll answer it. Okay. So uh, well, we'll answer it. You see. So recall that when we have a manifold, a compact Riemannian manifold, and a Riemannian matrix. Human and compact. Then the total scalar curvature. 
So the integral of this scalar curvature g on m, so maybe I can call this g, s g, and v g, just the volume. Then there's the einstein elbert functional. It's just the, uh, just the, just the, 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 you know, this over vg with some power. So usually, usually historically, that was this. Okay, where d is the dimension of n. So this is the einstein elbert functional. So it's been used. This functional has been used to uh, to find the uh, Einstein matrix and um, constant cur curvature matrix in a conformal class because of the following two very classical theorem. So I think uh, I, I read that it was goes back to Hilbert, like, like 100 years ago, is that if you to look at the critical point of H, when you see it as a, you know, as a function on the space of Riemannian matrix, then the critical points are exactly the Einstein. Einstein matrix. OK. And a uh, slightly more recent theorem of Yamabe is that the critical point of H, when you restrict H to the conformal class of a certain matrix, of any matrix, then the, crit the set of critical points is exactly the constant, uh, the constant scalar curvature matrix. Okay, so these are very old theorem, and of course this this uh, functional does not really work very well for the Calabi problem on the Kerr class because these two these two functions are just constant for the Kerr class. However, um, however, in the in the second case, actually we can. We can show, actually, it's classical that that these function only depends on the red vector fields. Okay, so so the einstein hilbert functional, you can see it as a as a functional on the space of red vector fields. Okay, I uh, will change the slightly this this oh, not this. I will change slightly the uh, the definition. So it only depends, so it's a functional over the space of red vector field. And uh, so it's going to be just this total scalar curvature, power n plus 1, divided by the volume power to n, to the n. OK? And so the theorem is that, so maybe a fact first, h is uh, homogeneous and well is well defined on this set so it does not depend on the matrix it just depends on the red structure and the contact structure which is fixed so h is homogeneous and then the theorem is that the critical point of h are the vector field or the red vector field with the Futakian variant of the the polytop so V equals zero. So this is the space of right so so the critical point of the red vector fields for which the the Futakian variant of the label polytop to it is zero. Okay. So in the non toric case actually we have to add uh, the vector fields such that the total scalar curvature is zero. So in the Toric case, this, this set is, is empty. In the Toric case, this total scalar curvature will be positive. So that, be, that and in the compact case, so that's going to be a zero here. That's going to be empty. Sorry. Okay. So this is the theorem. So okay, good. Um, maybe I speak too quickly, actually. So uh, maybe yeah. Oh. Uh, um, Actually, in the in the Turi case, it's, it's it's quite straightforward. It's just because the total scalar curvature. Actually, here I'm, I'm in the. I should modify as well a little bit this functional because I actually I take the transversal part of the scalar curvature, but it doesn't matter much for 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 your question. 
it's a uh, so in the in the Turing case here there's going to be just by a you know integration by part that's going to be just the integral over the boundary so here I should have put oh no that was n okay there's going to be just the integral over the boundary of that measure we we I didn't define but we've been talking about all all, all the week and um, so so we see that clearly it, it doesn't depend on on any geometry I would put on the transversal part it's really just the, the red vector film okay so actually yes so in the Tauric case there's going to be this this uh, like a isoperimetric functional that comes in so the boundary the integral of the over the, the boundary over the, the, the integral of the pi type itself and um, so yeah maybe maybe a, maybe I can add this so in particular if y n psi b is um, is k semi stable in the sense of in the sense of uh, Tristan Collins and Gaborski AD, then V is a critical point of H. Okay, the proof is just like a you know very rational formula. I don't I don't think you really want to, to see this. It's not really uh, enlightening. You know, you'll just have to Take the derivative and then see what happens. Maybe I can I, I can give the the precise formula we get while we do that. And oh we oh yes uh, there's maybe before really talking about this. Um, I must say that so in the in the Sasaki Einstein case. So if we are looking for Sasaki Einstein metric. Then, because of the spatial shape of this of a Sasaki matrix, the cur the scalar curvature will be uh, a constant, like fixed, like it's going to be. Uh, uh, I'm probably I th should I look? It's like something like four and uh, plus one, maybe, or something like maybe two here, and yeah, I think it's two and plus two. So you know it's the constant fixed by by the by uh, by the dimension of the manifold. Okay, so maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong about this constant, but it's something like this. Okay, so um, so the and so the, the fact that we are fixing this, so that means that in the cone of red vector field we are only looking at some. So if this is C star, so this is a red vector field, then we are only looking at some actually hyperplane. Okay, this is fixed. So the total scalar curvature would have to satisfy something like 4n times v b, okay? And uh, yeah, maybe I should just say instead of writing anything, just cn, a constant depending really just on n, okay? So we have to fix to to this uh, to this setting, and then the functional here is just like uh, so it's going to be what 4n or n plus one as uh, v, v, okay, and so this is the volume, and so this this theorem can be seen as a generalization of Martelli Sparks Yao theorem in the in the Sasaki Einstein case, okay. Actually, in this case, so because we are fixing this relation. Because we are fixing this relation, we have um, uh, so 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 the functional is just a volume functional, and the fact that this one is is uh, strictly convex, uh, so implies that they prove uniqueness. So what I mean by by uniqueness is that maybe I should I should have write it this here. What we have about uniqueness is that. So in the Sasaki Einstein case, I should there exists only one red vector field. Okay. That minimizes this uh, this functional. 
and such that the feedback in variant PBLB is zero. Okay. So, um, so in general, that that's uh, actually the, in general that's not true. And I can give an example for actually a very very simple example s true times s three uh, yes with the one Zeller uh, contact structure. So. Uh, Okay, so maybe I can describe it uh, on the on the polytap. So the cone actually. So the cone will be given by uh, by the the normals as one over p one zero one. Uh, oops, p. L two will be one over q zero one uh, one. L three one over P minus one zero one. So this is this is a cone over a square. This is a very simple case. And F four is one over Q zero minus one zero uh, one. Okay. So this is a cone over a square. And if we take the span over Z of L1 to L4, then it's a lattice. It's easy to check because, uh, well, I choose P and Q in, in Z with P over 5Q. And, uh, well, uh, GCD to equal to 1 is going to be a lattice, and that cone will be, will be a good cone, OK? Um, so we yeah, get a good cone. Okay, and, and when we look, what it is actually is the w when we do the Delson construction with that cone, we get we get the one Xeller structure on, on uh, S two cross S three, and then we can we can put the, this functional H. You know, we can we can put the, the dual cone to this uh, functional and look for critical points. Actually, you can. So we find a few critical points. There's three critical points. Three critical points. So this is, uh, let's say, B0 is just 1, 0, 0. OK, so we get the, we get the square, which, which we, but with distinct P and Q. So the matrix is not Einstein, but the matrix is with, as a constant scalar curvature matrix. And there's also two others, which well, I don't remember by heart. Zero plus or minus. Oh. Oops, maybe I should this way. One plus four Q. P minus Q. One. So we have two critical points. So of course there's a symmetry on the cone that sends p pl b plus uh, on b minus. So th these are not really distinct. But uh, actually, if you put um, so so, but you cannot you know put uh, cannot send b zero over on b plus or b minus. So and actually this is a square. This is going to be a rectangle and it's going to be a trapezoid. So the metric. So, so the metric will be very different, actually, than, you know. And the, um, uh, so in the, in the quadrilateral case, we know that whenever the Fidaki invariant is zero, then there exists a constant scalar curvature metric. Okay, there's no obstruction apart than the Fidaki invariant zero. So we know that there exists a constant scalar curvature metric, constant scalar curvature metric on, on both for, for these examples. 
because it's over a square. And uh, so we have really like an example of, um, so we have, so maybe to answer the question. So why do we know so actually, in the um, so this is a theorem as well. This is not that obvious, but in the quadrilateral case, we know that uh, all the metric, all the solution of the Abre equation will be uh, given by uh, you know Hamiltonian two forms by an explicit yeah solution, and uh, so this is the what Vestisov was talking about you know Monday the fact that we have it it's reduced to some linear algebra. Uh, so, um, so we have so we have example of really distinct. So maybe just to be to be very clear. We have different uh, value of h. I'm I'm sorry. Value oh, I didn't check. I uh, good question. Thank you. I will I will uh, go back into those very horrible computation to see <laughs> if they have different value. Um, no, I didn't check. So yeah, so maybe to be clear that, so we have, so S2 times S3, DPQ, factoric. Okay. We're gonna have uh, constants, we have Sasakian, also have Sasakian, there's two Sasakian, um, Constants kind of curvature metric, which are really di different. It cannot be put one to the one to the other, like uh, with a diffeomorphism or what sorts. Okay, they are very distinct, and uh, which are non-isometric. And uh, with different, with distinct red vector field. Um, yeah, two. So uh, since then, there's a, you know other examples of you know cons you know non non uniqueness of constant scalar curvature metric uh, found by uh, Boyer and Tenzin Friedman with the help of um, with the help of um, joint construction. So we have more examples of non uniqueness. Oh, uh, actually, um, yeah. So it's not uh, so. So now the. Uh, so yeah, in the um, in the Tory case, I I think there is no problem. But I don't want to say something wrong. But uh, so in general, so so as I said with uh, with Charles and Christina and Yang, we've been uh, studying this functional in general, and so we have to put like uh, some condition to really see that there there exists. So we are the condition is that the the total scalar curvature is bounded below. Like if you if you fix some transversal set, then it has to be bounded below, so we can you know manage since the volume f volume tend to infinity on the boundary, then we will you know we have a functional that. This is bounded below and goes to infinity on the boundary of a con compact set, so we have some minimal. But but uh, in general, if if the so there are examples where the total scalar curvature is not bounded below, and then we cannot say some, something like that. So it can become like a, I don't know. We we can have some problems with with this. And uh, so, but in the toric case, we have we have existence because because of this because the 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 total scalar curvature is positive and bounded below, and so there is no problem. But that, that doesn't mean that we have constant scalar curvature metric, of course. That that just means that we have, you know, label polyt up with Fitek and zero. But another question is, is there an analog of extremal metrics? Yes, absolutely. So yeah, absolutely. Actually, I, I talked about the constant scalar curvature curves, but uh, Actually, when we have a next, uh, you know, a solution of the Abri equation, but with an affine scalar curvature, then it, you know, you can 
take it to the Sasakian manifold and it's going to be an extra mall in the sense of defined by Boyer and Gauguin and Simanka, which means the, you know, also the, be the minimal of the Calabi functional for the days. Uh, like a canonical vector field? Because uh, you, you have, you know, you're like the, the functional, you mentioned the functional is uh, functional on all the vector field, right? Yes. So maybe you have a preferred one. Yeah, so, so uh, but uh, I don't, I don't, well, I, I don't know how, how we would like to define a canonical vector field, but this way could be, yeah, this is a For critical the, the point. Three vector field, they are the same? I'm um, sorry? The functional is the same? I don't. Uh, you mean the value of the functional? Yeah. I I don't know. It was some question as well. I don't know if it's the. Uh, actually, no. I I should have checked. I didn't. But uh, that's a good question. If the value of the functional is different depending on which one, I don't I know. I see. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Thank you, Camilla. Thanks for speaking here.